Did you know the baby's crying? Virgil, I just got him to sleep. Oh, poor little fella. Must have had a nightmare. You woke him up. You get him to sleep again. Oh, come to daddy, little man. Oh, that's it. All I ask for is a moment's peace. Read a little and maybe get some housework done. Housework? She makes the beds, washes the dishes, and six months later, she starts all over again. <laughs> Look, he thinks I'm funny. Well, you ain't. Virgil, when are you going to start doing things around here? What is wrong with this house? Well, for one thing, I was laying in bed looking up at the sky last night, and I thought, where's the roof? Oh, you're so funny. I forgot to laugh. Have you worked on the crooked kitchen floor lately? You know the floor sits crooked, which means the oven sits crooked, which means every time I try to bake a cake, it comes out crooked too. You know, just last week I laid the baby down on a quilt while I cooked supper. He rolled right out the back door. What has my luck become? Yeah, you're pretty lucky, ain't you? Virgil, I don't care how long it takes. You will rock him and rock him and rock him till the cows come home if you have to. But I got things to do. Margaret, he's asleep. And I suppose all the rocking I did earlier had nothing to do with it. Margaret, what are you doing? You want the whole world to see my underwear? There ain't a soul around. You never know when somebody might be looking through a window. I wish you would get your job back. I was laid off. Now, can I help that I was laid off? No, Virgil, you can't help that you was laid off. I ain't blaming you. I never said I was blaming you. I know why you're so upset. It's that time of the month again, ain't it? None of your business. Yep, the 15th rent is due. <laughs> you're so funny, I forgot to laugh. Again. Oh, I'm so sorry I get your way. Virgil, who are you looking for? I ain't looking for nobody. <coughs> Don't you bother that meter reader when he gets here. He's got a job to do, and he does not have time to stand around and listen to your boring fishing stories. You ain't my boss. He likes talking to me. What did you say? He likes talking to me. You make me sound like the most boring person in the world and quit showing my drawers off to the whole world. There he is, quick, hide my boxes. <laughs> you have got to get your job back. Hey, great to see you. Oh, you're home. Come in, come in. How are things? I heard about rain. I heard you got a divorce. Well, I heard it was for health reasons. Yeah, she got sick of looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Listen, I got a divorce joke for you. What should a woman do if she sees her ex-husband rolling around on the floor? Shoot him again. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the right answer. I just need this paper side, Mr. Slim. <coughs> Listen, I drove the pickup in town last week and bought a whole bunch of new fishing lures. Let me grab them and show them to you. What do you do? Right? Don't worry, it won't take no time at all. I'll be back before you can say, love is grand, divorce is 15 grand. I really don't have time. And I never want to speak to you again. I mean it, too. I never want to speak to you again. Howdy there, Bertha May. I'm paid.
know my new mister. She's been trying to make me jealous ever since I asked her to marry me 15 years ago. Every time I turn around, she pretend like some fellas making eyes at her. <laughs> Look, I don't want to get in the middle of y'all's love respect. Uh, Mr. Sludge, I really need to go. Sorry to take you so long, Mr. B, but I wanted to make you a bologna sandwich. Maybe next time, you'll just sign and don't be on my way. Virgil! Look what I done found the flea market. Wow, that's a real beauty, huh? That's 1970s Chevelle. That's what they call collector. I think you mean a collector. Have a good day.
We never have went to study, and we never will go study. I like someone else, so leave me alone. Do I have to spell it out for you? A-L-O-A-N, alone. <laughs> Yours truly, Virgil Slug. He was ever so romantic. I could have thought her mind called that a love letter. Oh, you just have to read between the lines, Daddy. What Virgil was really saying was that he liked me. He was just too shy to say it out loud. Why are you staring at me like that? Have you done a wit lush your ever loving mind? Fiddle Dee Dee, finding this love letter again, just gave me new hope that my one true love will come looking for me, make me his once and for all. Now, Annabelle. I told you to call me first! Scarlet is not your name. You watched that dumb movie too many times, you lost all track of reality. When I've saved up enough money, I'll make it legal and everyone to call me Scarlet! <laughs> Look at that, Daddy. You see the flock of ducks flying? Ain't they pretty? Sure does. <laughs> Cold and bitter. <laughs> 
our town is the place about me and my friends growing up full of skill. Our town is already a famous place. Oh gosh, and I just wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I meant is that it's already been written. Yes, ma'am, I, I wrote it last week, I think. Well, you liked my play, didn't you? I can tell. You never know, you'll never know how much this means to me, Miss Dingledine. That's not you worked really hard on this, didn't you, Virgil? Yes, ma'am. I wrote night and day, like my mama always taught me. An escalator can never break. It can only become stairs. <laughs> Virgil. Yes, ma'am. I think your play is. Yes, ma'am. I think you wrote a really great play. Ah, I knew you liked it. I was glad to see me single day. What kind of you on it? Well, looks like I forgot to write a grade on it. I'll just give it to you. Wait till the other kids hear about this. They was making fun of me for falling down halfway these thick glasses. But wait till I tell them we're gonna play. That'll show. I says, I says, I'm much obliged to you, Miss Dingling. Dingle Dan. I says to her, wait till I tell the other kids about this. They're always making fun of me for falling down and having to wear these thick glasses. Wait till I tell them I wrote a good play. That'll show them. The best part is yet to come. Look at this. Virgil, you got an A plus? Big ol' A, sure did. I'm so proud of you. Golly, I've never seen one before. <laughs> so that's what an A looks like. <laughs> What's your play about, Virgil? Well, like I said, I based it on me growing up here in Lake Skillet, but I disguised it as being about a small, fictitious town that I called Blueberry, South Carolina with a sheriff named Sandy Baylor, who lives with his Aunt Dee and his boy Opium. He works with this bumbling deputy sidekick Barnaby, who can't ever get nothing right, and the whole town of Blueberry looks up to their sheriff. Virgil, you got that from the Andy Griffith Show. Uh, for your information, the Andy Griffith Show took place in Mayberry, North Carolina, not Blueberry, South Carolina. Virgil, you knucklehead! Andy, Sandy, Mayberry, Blueberry. Aunt B, Aunt D, Deputy Barney, Deputy Barnaby. So what are y'all trying to say? That I stole my whole play from the Andy Griffiths show? Pretty much. Yes, sir. Barney from May, will you give us a moment? Sure. Come on, Ellen. Let's go to the kitchen. I'm hungry. We'll take the baby, too. I thought everybody would be excited about my A plus, Margaret. We are proud of you. Let me see the script. Margaret, when I was growing up, there wasn't a day that went by that somebody didn't push me over, make fun of me, or laugh at me. Virgil's so dumb, he thinks Johnny Cash is a pay toilet. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I ever felt smart was when I was talking to Ellie. But I decided that when I grew up, I was gonna show them all. I was gonna be a real somebody in this great big world. And when I got that A plus, that's when I knew that my moment had come at last. Oh, but when I showed the other fellas my grade, they laughed at me even more. I've been thinking lately, what have I ever done in my life to make you or Virgil Jr. proud of me? The only answer I could come up with was nothing. I work in a podunk hardware store, and I can't even afford to fix my wife's cooking kitchen floor. Yay, Virgil! Oh, lately, I just been feeling like one of them there submarines. Submarines? Just trying to keep my head above the water. Now, Virgil, you've done plenty of things. What about that time you entered the Lick Skillet Spelling Bay? Mississippi. Mississippi. Can you use it in, in a sentence, please? <laughs> the word I just gave you was Mississippi. Are, are, are you referring to, to the river or, or the state? Either. Either. E I T H E U R. Either. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Virgil, but that's incorrect. In fact, that ain't even close. Are you really that stupid? Please leave the stage as you- Hey, 
might as well have. It's how I felt. You know what, Virgil? You're right. I mean, what do we know about such things? If a great teacher like Miss Dingle Dine thought that you deserved an A+, plus, then who are we to say it ain't good? Oh, you're right on the grave, Margaret. Well, wait a minute. I got so depressed, I forgot to tell you the most exciting part yet. Where's Eleanor and Bertha May? Virgil, can I borrow your BB gun? <laughs> what for? We took the baby out to play in the grass, and a straight dog came and drove you across the road. What? <laughs> I wrote this here play when I was a little boy called Our Town. They called you Our Town when you was a little boy? <laughs> Shut up, Miller. And I thought about putting my play on here in Lake Skillet, but then I thought, no, Virgil, you gotta think big for once in your life. A uh, A-plus play should be put on in an A-plus town. So I sent my play off to, are y'all ready? Hollywood, California to see if they thought it was good. <laughs> Hollywood, California. Virgil, boy, you're crazy. Why am I crazy? Hollywood, California. Virgil. <laughs> Bertha, man, will you get that? It's like that famous saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, be well enough alone. Birds of a feather flock together and crap on your car. <laughs> One good turn gets most of the blankets. If all is not lost, where is it? Don't y'all see? If I was to get my play put on in Hollywood, California, we would finally know what it's like living on the top floor of a two-story outhouse. Virgil, honey, I just don't want you to get your hopes up. Margaret, think positive. It's like my mama always said, two wrongs don't make a right, but two rights did make an airplane. <laughs> that don't make sense. Well, I understood it. Of course you would. We writers are deep thinkers like that. Uh, Bertha May? Huh. Bertha May, where'd you get all that stuff? Well, well didn't y'all see him? Peter the Meter Eater gave you this. Hello? Oh, hold on, I'll ask her. Bertha May, it's Brad Pitt again. <laughs> Now, 
one. I'm lucky I guess. My wife's one in a million. Really? I thought she was one in a raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone quiet so we can get this meeting underway. Hey, she's your wife. Can't you shut her up? Just chew your popcorn real slow and the crunch will dry out much for talking. As you all know, I've been trying for the longest time to bring a little culture to our humble town of Hollywood. Well, Mrs. Tischwater had done it again. I've been finding an acting troupe to bring us a play. What did she say over there? Chew harder. The other day, I received a script in the mail with a note saying they would bring the play to us at no charge. The beautiful and classic play, Our Town. What? Some woman 
girlfriend called Soapy Dishwater. <laughs> Sorry about that, Miss Dishwater. My wife was talking to me. I think we made have a weak connection. She thinks we got a Greek infection. <laughs> I'm calling in reference to the play you sent us. Anybody want to play tennis? Oh, Virgil, give me that. Hello, who is this? Sophia Dishwater. Well, what do you want, Miss Dishwater? I'm calling in reference to the play you sent us. She's calling about your play. My play? Oh, wait a minute. Are you calling about our town? Our town, that's right. Where's she calling from, Virgil? The only place I said it was Hollywood. You mean she's calling from the Hollywood? You're calling from Hollywood, right? That's right. We would like you and your troop to come perform your play for us. But if she wants me to bring my play to Hollywood, I'll get to the bottom of this. Taylor, no! This here is Taylor. Why are you calling us from, woman? Hollywood, Alabama. Yep, bad connection. She says my name's Alibaba. <laughs> what? She said, calling from Hollywood, Alibaba. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, Sophie. Uh, I mean, sorry about that, Miss Dishwater. That was just my dumb friend, Ellie. Look, our connection is really bad. If you agree to calm, I'll call you next week to settle the details. We are really excited about this upcoming engagement. Ooh, she really is doing some fancy talk. We done got ourselves an engagement. I'm a big fan of Thornton Wilder, and I've been wanting to bring him to Hollywood for years. Well, you tell Mr. Wilder that we'll be happy to meet him when we get there. Oh, Mr. Sludge, you are so drool. Well, yes, ma'am, but only when I eat pork. I'll be in touch. Ta-ta! Uh, hello? Uh, she must have been at a dance. Someone was doing the cha-cha. Oh, Margaret, I did it. Can you believe it? Didn't I tell you my play was good? Oh, let me tell you a story about a man named Sludge. Poor good for nothing whose life wouldn't budge. And then one day he wrote a little play. Then when the phone call came and it was Sophie Dishwater, telling him to want to do a play, and she called me Kissing while I'm on duty. 
but I so happy to get on the beach and see some fly show. Wait till I tell them. <laughs> you want me to pick you up at your place?
birth of man. Could have fooled me. If Ailer's <laughs> such a great catch, why didn't he give you engagement? Well, he did, 15 years ago. How come you ain't wearing it? Didn't it do something to you? Yeah, it turned my finger green. <laughs> Speaking of green, I'm green with envy of Ailer catching a prize after life. You know the rules of love, Dorothy Lynn. Until you walk down the aisle, you're still free merchandise. That ain't how it works, Peter, and you know it. Further man, you don't have to hide your feelings for me anymore. I do not have feelings for you. I'll have you know me and Ellie had a great five years together. I thought you'd been engaged for 15 years. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, if he ain't been smart enough to walk you down the aisle after all these years, then it's his loss. The early bird might catch a worm, but the second mouse gets the cheek. The things you say. Bertha May, why don't you buy me sway clothes like Margaret by this virgin? Ellen, he got here just in the nick of time. Another man is fighting for my conviction. Oh, he is, is he? Hey, mister. Yeah? Have you seen my Hot Wheel? It ain't a secret, dollar. Ellen. Whatever. I'm here to take Bertha May. Where are you taking her? <laughs> a place me and her can sit in the solitude and stare into one another's eyes as we whisper sweet nothings into each other's ears. Proving once and for all, two's company, three's crowd. <laughs> hey, can I come? <laughs>
I was trying to give you directions. Oh, you're so cute how you keep changing subjects. Wait, do you have GPS? Uh, hold on. Margaret, if I ever had GPS. <laughs> no, just the moms. Good news, never had it. Does that matter? Let me see if I can find a better connection. What? Uh, hello? What's that? Oh, yeah, that's much better. What? Do we have a map of Alabama? Well, yes, ma'am. Somewhere around here. Why do you ask? What's that you say? What's that you say? What's that you say? What's wrong, Virgil? Margaret, you remember that time that I accidentally nailed my toes to the bathroom floor? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is way worse. Virgil, you pale as a ghost. Give me that. Hello, Miss Dishwater. He's going to have to call you back. He's so excited he can't even stand up right now. All right, bye. Virgil, what's wrong? What happens if you look this sick since our honeymoon now? <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I found 50 cents in my pocket, so I'm going to a payphone and call a friend who will listen to my problems. I'll give you a dollar so you can call them both. Hey, that ain't very nice. <laughs> what do you expect? Then stay out of the sun! <laughs> Virgil! You mean to tell me you got the wrong Hollywood? Well, how was I supposed to know that there is more than one Hollywood? Virgil! There's Hollywood, Pennsylvania! Hollywood, Florida! Well, that's just dumb. Who in his right mind could give several towns the same name? It's like my mama always said, the road to hell is paved with idiots. Virgil! I'm in shock! I can't breathe! My heart is skipped to beat! What is everyone going to say when we have to call this whole thing off? Margaret, you mean cancel the play? I can't do that. I can't go back on my word. Virgil, you cannot tell everyone that you got the wrong town. We cannot stand on that kind of humidification. You're just going to have to say it's postponed. Now call Miss Dishwater back and tell her you've changed your mind. Margaret, I can't do that. A man's word has got to mean something. What about a man's reputation? Virgil, this was our chance, our chance to face somebody in this great big world. Don't you see that? Virgil, you're in the newspaper. They're throwing you a parade. And why? Because you got an A-plus on a play when you was a kid. Big deal! Mama, this is not your thing, sorry! <laughs> I knew it, Margaret. You think you done went and married a nobody. Well, does a nobody make an A-plus on a play when he's just a kid? I wouldn't call that a nobody. I would call that a real somebody. An A plus, Margaret. And I don't care if my play gets put on in Hollywood, California, New York City, or Old Man Johnson's backyard. It's my play, and I'm proud of it. Where are you going? Virgil, how am I supposed to call Mary Jane and Geneva and Carlotta and tell them that you ain't going to Hollywood? They were jealous of me, Virgil. But what about our trip? I love you, Virgil. And I always will. But I'm tired. I'm tired of it. 
Hey, here's the... What you doing at the crossroads all by yourself? Pantry stock? <laughs> Silly. <laughs> hey, guess what? I got a part in Virgil's play. Ain't that something? Well, I'm pretty nervous about it. That's real good, I reckon. I play the part of Aunt D. Not sure what kind of part it is, though. She cooks and cleans and stuff. Oh, I should play that part up real swell. I like to cook and clean. The fellow who ever marries up and he sure will be lucky since I like to cook and clean so much.
had a little me Sophia dishwater. Tonight was a good night for TV. Why did you choose to be a part of the Cultural Arts Committee if you don't enjoy coming to the theater? Deputy, what are you doing? Pistol practice. Just ten minutes every day. You never know when I'm going to have to use this bad boy. Put it away before someone gets hurt. <laughs> Mr. Tishwater, come hold your child. It ain't a real dog. <laughs> I said we forget this whole thing. It's trying to bring folks to the holiday is like trying to marry off my loony dog. Anything is possible, Craig. You ever tried slamming a revolving door? You are impossible. Well, you are hideous. And you make a great grumpy grandfather. And you make a great burglar. You break every camera with your face in. <laughs> This is the deputy speaking, and if neither of you simmer down, I'm going to have to take it both to the big house. We are the Comfortable Arts Committee, and Mr. Slodge and his troop will be here at any moment to perform scenes for their play for us. Now, I'm going to go off and powder my nose, and while I'm gone, I don't want any of you escaping. I mean, leaving. <coughs> Daddy, I'm so nervous. You heard what Miss Tishwater said. We're just going here for an engagement. You will if you be a firm little blessing. Won't you? Hello? Is anybody in there? That's him. I know that weak red neck voice anywhere. Virgil, I'm waiting for my prince to return. Uh, excuse me, but I was looking for the kuzu playhouse. Virgil Slide, you came back after all these years. You must be Miss Dishwater. We got a little lost on the way. So sorry, Dr. Wait. She can't help it. She's big bum. Daddy! <laughs> Look, you ain't changed a bit, see? And just between you and me, I know the real reason you came to Hollywood. Miss Dishwater, look who's here. <laughs> Mr. Sludge, I'm glad to finally meet you. Where's the rest of your ensemble? They're out parking the hearse. The hearse? Yes, sir. Sid Wellwater, Link Skillet's Undertaker, let us borrow his hearse so there will be enough room for everybody. And I still had to ride on top. You came in a purse. Well, you know them Undertakers. They're the last person to let you down. <laughs> <laughs> Was that supposed to be funny? Well, never mind. So as soon as the rest of your troop gets here, please show us what you have. Will this give you enough room? Yes, ma'am. This is fine. I do have a little bad news, though. My cousin Camo, who was supposed to play our deputy Barnaby, fell out of his tree stand last night and broke his ankle. Maybe we can find you an understudy. What kind of part is it? He's a sort of wiry sidekick to the sheriff. And he says dumb things like compulsions for compulsions, naive for naive, therapeutic for therapeutic. Look no further, mister. I just might have the man for the job. You do? Says dumb things you say. Yes, sir. Sidekick you say. Yes, sir. Wiry deputy, you say? Yup, that's Deputy Barnaby, all right. That can only describe one person. My cousin Frank. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe you... Here, why don't you read these lines from the play? These lines right here. <clears throat> here at the Rock, we have two rules. First rule, obey all rules. And second rule, do not lie the walls because it takes a lot of time to erase the writing. Oh, never mind. You ain't rocked that part at all. Wait, those lines are in our town. Uh, yes, ma'am. Big forty-five. Well, let me see the script. Virgil, deep into my eyes, you know, space can size so many things. Yes, ma'am. Especially the mouth part. Don't you know me? Ain't you Betsy Grover? Virgil, Betsy Grover was crying time. Oh, yeah. I broke up with her because she was seeing other people. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil. Real close. Did you come in town for an official engagement or not? Yes, ma'am. Ain't it lucky how we both saved ourselves for each other and never got married? But I did get married to Margaret Hooper. You married Margaret Hooper? She was so homely in high school. Well, some things never change. <laughs> when did you break up? We didn't break up. She just needed some time to herself. Oh, my goodness and mercy me. She know why you came to Hollywood? Yes, ma'am. And let me tell you, she ain't happy about it at all. How embarrassing for her. There's someone I want you to meet. Daddy, Daddy, look who it is. It's Virgil Sludge. What do you think? He looks like he was dipped and ugly and hung out to dry. <laughs> no offense. None taken. He looks like he's face was set on fire and they put it out with a fork. <laughs> no offense. Well, that one hurt a little. Virgil, what are we supposed to do with the baby? I told you to leave 
explode. Whatever. This isn't our town. What do you mean? This script. What about it? You said you were performing our town. Yes, ma'am. This isn't it. It ain't what? Our town. Our town by Virgil Slug. <gasps> You're a plagiarist? <laughs> I'm a Baptist. You <laughs> came here on false pretense? I came here on the black hearse. I guess you think you're just so sagacious. Well, I guess I'm still a Baptist. <laughs> May I have everyone's attention? I have been hoodwinked by this man! Now, Margaret, I ain't never touched her. <laughs> Mr. Sludge, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call off the engagement. Oh, no, you don't, Miss Lang. I have waited my whole life for this, and I ain't about to let you or anyone else mess it up for me. But this whole thing is a farce. Sophia, these fine folks have come all this way to show us their play. So it's only here we want to show us the play. Someone has to ask you to have a seat and zip your lip and let someone else shine for what's in your privileged life. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. What? It's sludge. The stage is all yours, and we're very excited to see this play you brought to our little old town. Aren't we, Sophia? Aren't we, Sophia? Much obliged. Places, everybody. Ooh, could you do me a favor and press this here button when you hear something funny, and that here button when you hear something shocking? Ooh, and that button for applause at the end of the scene? Be glad to. Much obliged. And action. Well, here I am, just walking down Main Street of our humble little town of Blueberry, South Carolina. And I'm First of all, I want to ask you, and I want to ask you right now, why are you giving me the cold shut? Hammered. You know good and well why. Guys, if I knew why, I wouldn't be asking why. You'd sit in the back of Hertz with that, that Pelosi, and set him up in the front of Hertz with this Why is she crazy? 
because she liked me and thought that I was smart and clever and good looking. Well, because she thought I was smart and clever? Yeah, that makes her real crazy. Virgil, you put words in my mouth. Heaven knows there's plenty of room. <laughs>
even though I couldn't get us the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. You know something Hollywood doesn't have? Our crooked little house down the road from the Towson line. And your beautiful little cakes and pies. And the crib that held our firstborn child. And my beautiful collection of fishing lures. And the crib that will hold our secondborn child. Come true. 